good morning students write your name and seat number in the chat box we will discuss something till uh, all the student will join so i hope you are revising daily whatever the chapters i have taught on friday's lecture we discuss about the colligative properties uh, that is elevation in boiling point and depression in freezing point so today we will uh, complete this chapter and we will start the next chapter that is chapter number 6 group number 15 group number 16 and group number 17 that is inorganic chemistry part uh, so your uh, examination will be conducted online examination will be conducted and for this online examination uh, the syllabus will be uh, chapter number 10 that is halogen derivatives then chapter number 15 that is the introduction to the polymer chemistry then chapter number 2 then another two inorganic chemistry chapters are included chapter number 7 and chapter number 8 Uh, i will try to complete this chapter number 7 and 8 in this week so again we will uh, conduct the last extra lectures so chemistry extra lectures as per time table uh, we are going to finish on 23 but uh, due to the holidays on 15th of august and 22 august these lectures will be shifted on uh, 29 and 30 so on 30 of august we will uh, finish this extra lecture series yeah. and up to this uh, 30 of august we will complete almost uh, 12 chapters so note this point so we will start osmotic pressure osmotic pressure below this osmotic pressure part we have to learn what is mean by semi permeable membrane uh, 2.10.1 is osmosis and osmotic pressure so these uh, points ask for the board exam for the definition purpose no any uh, big question is asked on it remember so this semi permeable membrane uh, for the board examination always it is asked for the definition what is mean by semi permeable membrane um, give any one example and so the question is asked for the board exam what is mean by osmosis explain the term osmosis uh, for one mark or two mark if it is asked for two mark then we have to write the definition and we have to draw this diagram then one more question is asked for board exam explain the term osmotic pressure again we have to write the definition and we have to draw this diagram so all these are colligative properties colligative properties once again i am repeating these are the collective properties depend upon the number of solute particles and not depend upon the nature of solute particles so out of the four colligative properties we already learn Uh, the lowering of vapor pressure in the previous um, lectures we already learned what is mean by vapor pressure lowering of vapor pressure is the first colligative property second colligative property is elevation in boiling point means elevation means increase in boiling point the third colligative property was depression in freezing point and this is the last colligative property that is a uh, osmotic pressure it is denoted with symbol pi remember so we will start the semi permeable semi permeable this word is the semi semi means half permission is there permeable means permission semi permeable membrane it is a thin film remember it is a thin film 
uh, such as a cellophane. A cellophane, it is an artificial material. It is a polymer type material which is prepared with cellulose and wood pulp. So it is a thin film uh, such as a cellophane or pig's bladder. So I'm not uh, explaining this pig's bladder in detail because a student knows what is pig and its bladder. So this material is made up of with either a cellophane, a cellophane or pig's bladder, which is a porous, which has pores. Means this material is prepared with pores, which is having small pores. These pores are large enough to allow the solvent molecules. Means uh, this thin film allows the flow of solvent molecules from it. And these pores are small enough <clears throat> not to allow the passage of large solute molecules or ions of higher molecular mass through them. Means in short, the semi-permeable membrane which allows only the flow of solvent molecules which do not allow the flow of solute molecules from it because the pores are larger enough to flow the solvent molecules and these pores are small enough uh, these do not allow the flow of solute molecules remember this is called as semi permeable membrane half permission is there semi means half permission of only solute uh, sorry solvent molecules can be passed through this semi permeable membrane but solute molecules cannot pass remember so we are coming to the term what is mean by osmosis when a solution see always uh, solution means always it is prepared with solvent and solute so when a solution and pure solvent or two solutions of different concentrations two solutions of different concentration means um, uh, it may be higher concentration and one solution will be lower concentration so uh, if this, this is separated with semi permeable membrane the solvent molecules pass through the membrane uh, this term is called as osmosis remember uh, see the definition is given here the net spontaneous flow remember spontaneous flow means it is a natural flow without any external influence is there so the net spontaneous flow of solvent molecules remember solvent molecules only pass through uh, the semi permeable membrane and the solute molecules uh, do not pass through the semi permeable membrane and this is called as osmosis so the net flow of spontaneous the net spontaneous flow of solvent molecules into the solution or from uh, dilute solution to the more concentrated solution through the semi permeable membrane it is called as see this uh, diagram i will explain uh, there is a semi permeable membrane this is one compartment and this is another compartment the, this one compartment pure solvent is uh, taken these two compartments are fitted with we can clearly see this is a semi permeable membrane which is made up of with uh, cellophane or pig's bladder so semi permeable membrane is attached here so according to the definition uh, there is a net flow of the solvent molecules through the semi permeable membrane so this is a semi permeable membrane so due to this uh, osmosis what will happen uh, to the solution side the concentration of the uh, solution means the liquid because solvent molecules will pass through the semi permeable membrane so this uh, uh, portion will uh, increase the amount of solution will increase so if the amount of solution is increased means solvent is increased its concentration will be decreases remember and uh, in this uh, it is the same diagram but only uh, this compartment is fitted with solution of lower concentration and this compartment is with solution of higher concentration so according to the definition uh, in case of osmosis there is a net flow of solvent from uh, lower concentration solution to the higher concentration solution so remember this uh, definition will be asked for the examination if the definition is only asked for one mark don't draw these diagrams if the question is asked for two marks explain the term osmosis then we have to draw these diagrams remember 
so diagrams are necessary only one diagram is um, required don't draw uh, two diagrams this diagram is sufficient now this is a net flow of solvent to solution so uh, this part is completed what is meant by semi permeable membrane semi permeable membrane which allows only the flow of solvent molecules remember do not allows the flow of uh, solute molecules so we are discussing with this term new term osmotic pressure so for this osmotic pressure we have to do one experiment uh, see this uh, diagram i will explain which experiment we have to do uh, a semi permeable membrane is firmly attached or uh, it is tied to the mouth of the thistle tube so uh, see this uh, diagram i will explain uh, this is a beaker we are uh, taken a beaker and this beaker is filled with water see this beaker is filled with water and this is a thistle tube see this is a glass tube it is having the round bottom plus and uh, to this uh, bottom of this uh, thistle tube or it is a mouth of thistle tube semi permeable membrane is either tied semi permeable membrane is attached or semi permeable membrane is tied and this uh, thistle tube is filled with sugar solution so this is the setup of this uh, osmotic uh, pressure diagram so what will happen after some time what will happen this is a pure solvent water will uh, insert in this sugar solution uh, so if the water will insert in this sugar solution this level will increase this level of sugar solution will be increase and uh this process will be stop at one stage means the water will uh, enter in this uh, thistle tube um, because according to definition of osmosis it is a flow of solvent molecules to the solution so this is a solution and this is a solvent so osmosis takes place here but when this water um, when enters in this sugar solution what will happen um, the hydrostatic pressure will be generated here see oh see i will explain with this notes so as a result some water passes through the semi permeable membrane into the solution so when water passes through the you know, semi permeable membrane into solution what will happen the level of the uh, sugar solution level will be increases it causes the liquid level in the tube will rise so if the level of the sugar solution increases the liquid column in the tube creates a hydrostatic pressure remember this word this hydrostatic pressure is very important and what is the role of this hydrostatic pressure this hydrostatic pressure that pushes the solvent back through the membrane into the container so the pressure generated here uh, hydrostatic pressure hydrostatic pressure ka role kya hai this hydrostatic pressure again push back the some of the solvent molecules uh, in the sugar solution it will be pushed back into the container this container so this process will stop at equilibrium means um, uh, water entering in this tube and uh, hydrostatic pressure push back this solvent molecule solvent molecules into the container at equilibrium what will happen this process will be stopped so when the equilibrium is established the rate of forward reaction and the rate of reverse reaction will be equal means rate of entering of this water into the thistle tube and you know, the uh, rate of means due to the hydrostatic pressure what will happen the rate of uh, pushing back the solvent molecules into the container will be same so at this point at, at equilibrium this will happen so height of the liquid column tube remains constant this this height means there will be no increase in um, level of the sugar solution or there is no decrease in level of the sugar solution it will remains constant due to this hydrostatic pressure means hydrostatic pressure ka role kya hai hydrostatic pressure will stop the osmosis stop the 
osmosis so this hydrostatic pressure is called as remember this hydrostatic pressure stops the osmosis it is called as osmotic pressure it is generated with uh, this symbol pi so osmotic uh, pressure pi is always equal to h rho g where h is the height of the liquid column rho is the density of the solution and g is the acceleration due to gravity so remember this formula pi is equal to h rho g where uh, rho is the density and g is the acceleration due to gravity so what is the role of osmotic pressure here osmotic pressure is also called as hydrostatic pressure this hydrostatic pressure stop the osmosis means uh, water uh, will uh, do not enter in this thistle tube and hydrostatic pressure also uh, do not push back the solvent molecules into the container so this is called as osmotic pressure remember now uh, according to this osmotic pressure depending upon this osmotic pressure there are three types of solutions as um, depending upon the solubility of the solute um, in the introduction part we will uh, we already seen what is mean by saturated solution what is mean by unsaturated solution what is mean by super saturated solution so these are three types of solutions are depending upon the Uh, amount of solute dissolved in the uh, solvent but uh, there are again the three types of solutions isotonic solution hypertonic solution and hypotonic solutions these uh, types of solutions depend upon the osmotic pressure so i will explain first what is the mean by this isotonic solutions so isotonic solution means um, uh, the two solutions having the same osmotic pressure it is called as isotonic isotonic means osmotic pressure pi is same for two solutions we will uh, take one example if uh, 0.1 uh, molar urea solution and uh, 0.1 molar sucrose solution are uh, isotonic Uh, because their osmotic pressures are equal such solutions <coughs> have the same molar concentration uh, uh, grams per liter uh, this m stands for molarity remember not molality because uh, students get confused between molarity always and molality that is uh, moles per liter and moles per kg there is mol molality is moles per kg and molarity is moles per liter so uh, when the osmotic pressure is same this is 0.1 molar and this is also 0.1 molar sucrose solution when these uh, having the same uh, osmotic pressure it is called as isotonic then i am coming to this hypertonic and hypotonic solution this hyper means uh, more and hypo means less so when the uh, two solutions have the unequal osmotic pressures the more concentrated solution remember the more concentrated solution with higher osmotic pressure it is said to be hypertonic so in case of hypertonic solutions uh, osmotic pressure is uh, more and the dilute solution exhibiting the lower osmotic pressure it is uh, said to be hypotonic so when the osmotic pressure is same it is isotonic when A more concentrated solution with osmotic pressure is higher it is hypertonic and the dilute solution with the lower osmotic pressure it is hypotonic so this three definitions can be asked for the examination we will discuss this uh, another example osmotic pressure of the sucrose solution uh, is higher than uh, that of urea solution if if the sucrose solution is higher than the urea solution then it is called as sucrosion sucrose solution is hypertonic to urea and uh, urea solution is hypotonic to uh, sucrose solution like this vice versa uh, we can write the sucrose solution is hypertonic means osmotic pressure of sucrose solution is higher than the urea or Uh, the osmotic pressure of urea solution is lower than the 
sucrose solution. So urea is hypotonic to sucrose and sucrose is hypertonic to urea. Uh, then uh, we will discuss this uh, next one. Osmotic pressure and concentration of the solution. For very dilute solutions, osmotic pressure can be written uh, by using this equation, pi is equal to N2RT divided by V. Where V is the volume of the solutions in uh, dm cube. This V is the volume of the solution in dm cube containing N2 moles of non-volatile solute. This N2 indicates the number of moles of non-volatile solute where R is this gas constant equal to 0 0.08206 dm cube atmosphere Kelvin inverse mole inverse. This is unit of R, remember. This is value of R, this is unit of R and pi is, uh, you know, this pi is osmotic pressure in atmosphere. So this term N2 divided by V, N2 divided by V, N2 is a number of moles of non-volatile solute and V is the volume of the solution. So this uh, number of moles divided by liter, this is a nothing but molarity which is denoted with capital M. So again, uh, putting this value of M, this equation pi is equal to M RT. This equation 2.20, it is the relation between osmotic pressure and concentration of the solution. Note here, uh, this uh, M is molarity and this is a uh, temperature dependent quantity. Remember, molarity changes with temperature, but molality do not changes with temperature. Here. Uh, uh, we are taking this term molarity, but in case of elevation in melting, uh, elevation in uh, boiling point and depression in freezing point, you are using this uh, concentration in molality because uh, there we are dealing with the temperature. It is a, uh, a constant temperature, but here we are dealing with the temperatures which changes. That's why uh, we are using this term. Molarity, remember, molarity changes with temperature, but molality do not changes with temperature. This is asked for examination, board examination, uh, which is a temperature dependent quantity and which is a temperature independent quantity, remember. So, molarity is a temperature dependent, which depend on temperature. And the molality, it is a temperature independent quantity, uh, means which do not change with temperature. So this is an, an actually not asked for the board examination, the, this uh, uh, equation, but uh, numericals for the numerical purpose, uh, this is important. Uh, then I'm coming to this uh, uh, relation between molar mass of a solute from osmotic pressure. You know this term now, molar mass of a solute, this is third time we are going to discuss because already uh, in elevation in boiling point, depression in freezing point, we discuss this uh, molar mass of a solute. Molar of a solute, uh, uh, it is denoted uh, with this N2, uh, number of moles of solute is equal to the weight, that is mass upon the molar mass. So this is uh, equation number 2.19. Uh, pi is equal to N2 RT divided by V. Now, what is V, you know? If the mass of the solute in uh, V liters of solution is W2 and its molar mass of M2. Where this uh, W2 and M2, W2 it is the mass of the solute and, and this is M2 is molar mass of the solute. So N2 is equal to W2 upon M2. Putting this value of N2 in this equation, uh, so it will be W2 RT into M2V or M2 because M2 is a molar mass of a solute. We have to derive the equation M2 is equal to by rearranging this term M2 is equal to W2 RT divided by pi into V. So again, uh, this uh, molar mass of a solute and osmotic pressure, it is required for uh, numericals purpose. So numerical may be asked on it as this is a chapter for six marks. Uh, any 100% two marks numerical will be asked on this chapter, remember. And four marks are for theory. Two marks numerical or three marks numerical may be asked. If the three mark numerical will be asked, then three marks theory questions will be asked. 
so this is the last part of this chapter i will explain reverse osmosis it is called as ro this technology it is used in filters nowadays ro filter for water purification there are two types of filter one is ro filter and one is uv filter so this reverse osmosis um, ro it is opposite to the osmosis osmosis is nothing but you know just i explained osmosis means it is uh, allows the flow of solvent molecules through the semi permeable membrane and the flow of solute molecules is not allowed so the reverse osmosis is opposite to the uh, osmosis so the direction of the osmosis can be reversed see when it is reversed it is important the direction of the osmosis can be reversed by applying a pressure larger than the osmotic pressure to the solution side remember so we will explain this um, reverse osmosis process by using one example so we have to apply here this side this side is a solution side this solvent side fresh water is solvent the salt plus water means impurities are there this is a solution side and solution it is prepared with solvent plus solutes these solutes are non volatile solutes so the direction of uh, osmosis osmosis will be when uh, solvent to the solution actually this is a osmosis like this means when the fresh water will flows this is a semi permeable membrane these two compartments are fitted with semi permeable membrane this spm is semi permeable membrane it is short form uh, so this is a solvent compartment this is solution compartment if the osmosis according to the definition of osmosis this fresh water will flow from this compartment to salt water but we are discussing the reverse osmosis when the, with this uh, piston with this piston uh, we can apply the pressure excess of pressure which is larger than the osmotic pressure see here pressure it is larger than the pi this is the symbol pi pi is osmotic pressure so when the pressure is excess to the solution side what will happen the solvent molecule from this salt water will flow into the fresh water this is called as the reverse osmosis and this reverse osmosis method is used for um, uh, uh, water purification water filtration uh, this ro plant uh, are used for the desalination of sea water or bore water if the bore well water is there and for the purification of bore well water Uh, this uh, reverse osmosis uh, filter is preferred and uh, this reverse osmosis what is the role of this reverse osmosis when the excess of pressure is applied to this solution side what will happen uh, from this salt and water only the pure water will enter in the fresh water and automatically it will be purified so this is a concept of reverse osmosis reverse osmosis means it is opposite to the osmosis osmosis means flow of solvent to the solution but reverse osmosis it is a flow of solution to solvent remember so uh, the definition is given here i will explain when uh, the pure water that is fresh water and salt water it is separated by this semi permeable membrane uh, so this uh, pressure is higher to this uh, solution side so what will happen solvent from this salt water it will be flow from uh, solution to the solvent side it is called as reverse osmosis this direction is called as reverse osmosis so this chapter is completed here because this part is a uh, non uh, evaluative part this is deleted for uh, 2020 due to the covid 19 situation but i have given the notes for the students who preparing for the je exam neat exam and uh, different uh, competitive exam this one top factor is important for the je exam remember this is united with i but no any question will be asked for the board examination on this 
2.11. This is the colligative properties of the electrolyte. So this 2.11 part is uh, non-evaluative. All this part is non-evaluative. So, but uh, for the students who are preparing for the CET, read this part because uh, for the CET, this will be asked. Only for the board examination, this will be not, not asked for the exam. But for the CET purpose, for the NEET purpose, for the JE purpose, it is not deleted, remember. This is deleted for board exam only. This is not deleted for the competitive exams. So note this point carefully. For the competitive exams, this part will be asked. So students have to study this part also. What is a one-top factor? Then uh, only this, uh, not too much part is deleted. Uh, only the two pages are deleted. Th these are the some formulas I have given for solving the numericals. Henry's law, then lowering of vapor pressure. This is a relating, uh, relative lowering of vapor pressure. This is a elevation in boiling point. This is a molar mass of a solute and boiling point. This is a freezing point depression. This is a um, osmotic pressure. This is molar of a solute and osmotic pressure. So. All the numericals uh, for the uh, for solving the numericals, I have given these formulas also. Then uh, today we will start the next chapter. That is a uh, chapter number uh, uh, this one, chapter number seven. So this chapter number seven, uh, this is having the highest weightage. See, it is having eight marks weightage. So in this uh, chemistry, there are only three chapters, chapter number seven, chapter number eight, and chapter number 12. These three chapters having the eight marks weightage, that is aldehyde ketones and carboxylic acids from the organic chemistry part, which is having eight marks weightage. And these are two inorganic chemistry chapters chapter number seven and chapter number eight, that is the transition and inner transition elements. Uh, these chapters are the biggest chapter in the chemistry. Actually, the aldehyde ketones is the biggest chapter, which is already completed. That is having seven, uh, 27 pages. This is a 26 pages chapters. Uh, some of the portion is deleted, so don't worry, but the weightage will remain same. Means eight marks questions will be asked from this entire chapter that is the uh, elements of groups 16 17 18 in 11th standard we already studied the periodic table uh, what is mean by periodic table what are the what is mean by groups what is mean by periods this part is also covered in 10th uh, standard so i'm not discussing in details we are only uh, concentrating to the groups 16 17 and 18 these are the actually <coughs> P blocks. P block starts from group 13 and it ends with group 18. But in 11th standard, we already uh, learned the group 13, 14 and 15. That is uh, boron family, uh, carbon family and nitrogen family. It is already discussed in 11th standard. So remaining, uh, this 16 is oxygen family, this 17 is halogen family and 18 is uh, inert gases or noble gases that is also called as group um, zero elements in a previous nomenclature system it is called as group zero elements but now according to the IUPSC these group 18 elements uh, do not called as zero group elements or uh, inert gases or noble gases nowadays these are called as group 18 elements according to the IUPSC so the introduction uh, in the introduction part uh, the, these are the p block elements and why this is a p block elements because the last electron enters in the outermost p orbital so if you have if you return the electronic configuration of this group 16 group 17 and group 18 uh, we found that the last electron the last electron enters in outermost p orbital that's why it is called as that's why it is called as p block element remember 
so as you know the number of p orbitals is 3 px py pz these are the three orbitals of the p so maximum we can accommodate six electrons in the p orbital so the capacity of p orbital is six electrons so due to the six electrons there are six groups there are six groups uh, of the p block so it starts from group number 13 and ends ends with group number 18 group number 13 to group number 18 this is called as p block this p block elements there are six groups why there are six groups because the capacity of uh, <coughs> p orbital is six electrons so out of these uh, 13 to 18 13 group number 13 Uh, this is boron then carbon and uh, nitrogen family it is uh, already discussed in 11th standard so for the 12th standard you know, we are discussing group number 16 group number 17 and group number 18 uh, this is boron carbon nitrogen see in boron carbon nitrogen it is already completed these uh, oxygen fluorine and helium these are the first elements head of the groups boron is the head of group number 13 family carbon is the head of group number 14 family nitrogen is the head of group number 15 family oxygen is the head of group number 16 family and fluorine is the head of 17 family that is halogens and helium is the head of group 18 elements uh, so the valence electronic configuration of this p block is ns2 np np1 to 6 1 2 Six except helium because helium having the electronic configuration only when it's two. So this is the general electronic configuration of all the p block. This may be asked for examination. Write the general electronic configuration of p block elements for one mark. They may be asked this question. N is two, N p one to six. So in this chapter we will study the properties of group sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. Uh, so first part is <coughs> occurrence occurrence of group 16 17 and 18 we will discuss first the occurrence of oxygen family then we will discuss the occurrence of um, halogen family and then we will discuss the occurrence of uh, zero group elements but uh, this part is a <coughs> non evaluative part uh, for this covid 19 situation remember Uh, already, I have given the chart of deleted syllabus. So, uh, for this, uh, uh, due to the COVID nineteen situation, this introduction part is deleted. Yes, this introduction <coughs> part is deleted, but. occurrence part is not deleted remember occurrence part is not deleted because uh, question for one mark question <coughs> they may ask this uh, where uh, these group 16 elements will be found so one mark question will be asked on this gypsum what is the formula of the gypsum what is the formula of gypsum salt we will discuss so um, my kind request this occurrence part is not deleted remember only the introduction 7.1 is deleted so on the occurrence part one marks question will be there so as a one only one minute is remaining again the second lecture is there on 9:30 we will discuss the remaining part on 9:30 lecture so i will uh, stop here